What is up everybody? So today I wanted to talk about clownfish and anemone tanks. More specifically, some of the issues with having them in your tank. Now I know a lot of people, especially people that just got get into the hobby, uh, anemones really catch your eye and because they come in such a wide variety of colors, there's movement, which a lot of people like, they're automatically attracted to the anemones. And then of course with, um, you know, Finding Nemo, everybody loves clownfish. They're probably the most popular or recognizable uh, fish in the aquarium hobby. But there is a downside to keeping clownfish and there is a downside to keeping anemones in your tank when you want to pair them with other corals and other fish. So if you are new to the saltwater aquarium hobby, first of all, welcome. Um, and you're looking to do a clownfish anemone tank. I just wanted to make a video for you guys to show you some of the pros and cons of keeping an anemone and clownfish. Uh, in your aquarium. So I work for a company called Tank Nitions and we have well over 100 accounts. We do saltwater, freshwater, full reef tanks, uh, fish only systems, anemones, all that stuff. And I just kind of want to share my experience and also uh, the experience of our customers when it comes to different aspects of the hobby. And today I want to share with you guys some experience my customers have with when dealing with anemones. So we're going to go ahead and go through a couple of customers that I have that um, have kept anemones uh, in the past and currently, and we're gonna look at some video clips and I'm gonna sh go over kind of the pros and cons of uh, keeping an enemies. So let's get into it. Now here's a perfect example of a customer who loved the idea of anemones, wanted them in his aquarium, uh, put them in uh, at the very beginning, and we started off with just one, and that one has now spread to all these that you see in this aquarium and a matter of about six to eight months, I'd say, they've just been reproducing like crazy. And they've been stinging all the corals that he's put in since. So that total coral, there was three of them there and they're completely wiped out. There's also a zoophrag there that the anemones, by dislodging and moving around, stung. This hammer coral was beautiful, if you can see it in the back there. That was doing excellent. So it's not a water condition. The anemones took a trip and stung it. And you can see that head right there, the empty space. That's where it stung the hammer coral and, um, uh, killed it. So uh, they've taken over this whole aquarium, which was not his original intention. Now, forgive me, the water's a little murky here because I was in there cleaning. But I just want to kind of point out that, you know, originally he wanted to have a tank with different varieties of corals. He wanted it to be active, bright, and beautiful. Um, I would have advised against anemones from the get go because I know how troublesome they can be. But unfortunately, we're at this is where we're at now, and I would definitely advise. Uh, not getting any more expensive corals at least. Maybe there's some soft corals you could try to put in the substrate or, or, or somewhere else. But as of right now, I wouldn't risk putting any, spending any type of serious money on putting corals in this tank because those anemones, if they go for a walk or if they, get, they keep reproducing, they're just gonna sting anything and it's just burning money. So as far as I'm concerned, this is either gonna be an anemone tank or we're looking to take the anemones out, which you know can be its own challenge. Uh, but you know, at this point, it's either make a decision, no anemones or, you know, or let it be an anemone tank. All right, tank number two, which we're actually gonna be breaking down today. Uh, right here, again, bubble tip anemones. You can see they're working through those pallies. Uh, the pallies seem to be doing pretty decent. They're pretty resistant to the anemone thing. So if you are gonna get a coral, get something like a pally, they can, um, they seem to be a little bit more tolerant. But again, this, this tank, this little 55 gallon hang on the back filter tank was rocking and rolling. Coraline algae was growing great. All the other corals were doing good, but then the anemones just took off. And now we're in a position where um, they've completely killed every single coral in here. And the customer wants us to break down the tank and kind of take all the rock out and start over because they really want to be able to have different, a variety of corals and not just anemones. There's a beautiful monopora up top here that was doing great, a little frag that I put in and it was bright, bright red, but then the anemone decided to, hey, I'm gonna take a walk and reached out and stung the monopora and here we are, monopora is dying now. Here's another example of a customer who really wanted to clownfish an anemone but realized that they couldn't have all the corals that they wanted and the anemones, so they went ahead and just dedicated a whole aquarium to just the anemones and the clownfish, which I think is really, really cool. And I think personally it's the way to do it, especially when you're doing it on a smaller level. If you have a big tank, maybe you can get away with it, but smaller tanks, you really, I think you should keep them just base, basically anemones, maybe some basic softies and uh, keep it simple. So that way you don't have any issues. 
but this tank right here is doing great and the clownfish are super happy in here there's two of them um, all together and they are uh, crazy aggressive when it comes to protecting those anemones. Every time I clean this tank, they go after me, which is understandable. Now this is a jellyfish tank that he bought and he converted it to a, uh, he converted it to this. They've got some waving hand anthelia in here. There's also a brown cabbage coral. So there is some leather corals in here, but nothing too crazy. Nothing that, you know, you're gonna care too much if the anemones sting it and ends up dying. I personally wouldn't add anything else to this aquarium far as fish go just because these uh, two clowns, which are two different species of clowns, by the way, which I totally advise uh, not to do. But for whatever reason, it's working in here. Um, I wouldn't add any other types of fish in this aquarium because these guys are really, really aggressive. And especially when it comes to, God, there's an enemy's popping out of everywhere here. Oh my gosh, everywhere I look, there's another an enemy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would totally advise against having uh, any other fish with these guys because they're just too aggressive. Um, they'll just bully any other fish you put in here. But this is a, a really good example of just an anemone clownfish tank that I think works and works well, but it's dedicated to that. Now, I know I'm gonna stress a, a bunch of people out with this who keep kept anemones and clownfish before, but look at that beautiful anemone and then check it. This check this out over here. The clownfish refuse to go in the anemone They've actually laid eggs here in the in the silicone corner of this fish tank, and they have no interest at the of with the anemone at all. And they've been together for uh, over a year now, and they've shown no interest in going to that anemone uh, whatsoever. Moving on to another customer's tank who has a carpet anemone in here. These clownfish do get hosted by the anemone, uh, so that's not the issue. The issue is with carpet anemones, they are aggressive and they will eat anything that they can catch which means smaller fish or any fish that happens to swim by that's a little bit weaker. Um, they also can provide a pretty bad sting. Here's an example of a clownfish that seems to take very well to anemones really quick, the skunk clowns. Uh, this, is, this one here is an orange skunk clown and uh, they do really well in groups of more than two with the ocellaris and the perculas usually, uh, even the tomatoes and some of the other clownfish, you can only have two, but with the um, skunk clowns, you are able to have multiple, multiple uh, clownfish in a tank and they seem to do a lot better and a lot less aggression and they take to anemones incredibly well. Now the one anemone I do recommend that I absolutely love, I think they're the coolest, are rock flower anemones. Highly, highly recommend these. You can see the, the skirt of it's bright red. This one is actually in the sand, so they do awesome in the sand, which leaves the whole rock area open for other corals that you want to put in there. They don't move a lot. Uh, they're stationary pretty much Here's an example of them in a nano aquarium uh, nice red center there got pink skirt on this one and uh, We have one up here with a yellow uh, in the mouth and the with a red skirt just I, I love these and once they're pretty set They don't really tend to travel much as opposed to like your bubble and enemies or anything like that and they don't seem to be um, uh, as harsh on the fish uh, they do get bigger. They start, you'll get them small. You'll see them small, but they do get bigger. Look at this one right here. That beautiful red on that. Oh my gosh. I just love the colors that they come into, come in. And I love the fact that if you put them in the sand, most likely they like to stay in the sand. I, I mean, look at this bright orange color here in the corner of the aquarium, kind of away from everything else. So they don't present any type of problem that way. Just a big fan of rock flower and anemones. I highly recommend these. So in closing, I've kind of come to the conclusion through my experience doing aquarium service, as well as through the lens of our customers who have kept anemones and clownfish in the past and currently, one thing we kind of get from that is anemones are, it's a nice idea. They're beautiful, they have the vibrant colors, they, they flow, there's movement there. But if you're going to set up a clownfish anemone tank, just know that most likely those anemones own that tank and they're gonna do whatever they want in that aquarium, which means they're gonna create whatever real estate, whatever space in your tank that they want, it's going to be theirs. So you'll have to plan around that and just be mindful of the corals that you're putting in there with them and how much money you're spending on those corals and how fragile those corals are also is something you should consider. Look, by no means am I trying to turn you off of anemones, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just coming from the perspective of a consumer and from what the customers that have got anemones in their tanks have told me and their experiences. They wish someone would have told them 
uh, how aggressive and how dominant anemones can be in an aquarium. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to leave, please do. In the meantime, I gotta get back to work. I got a lot to do here at the shop. I'll see you on the next one.